I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect, perfect harmony. harmony. You're flat. Who's flat? I'd like to oh, you talk to me in in my my arms arms and keep I'm British, I'm a taxpayer, so you just keep your remarks to yourself. I'm just about to sick of this. You're talking about it. You're so what? Hey! Do you you, you be <laughs> Kids do it. I do get winded these days. I went to the doctor the other day. I said, What's good for wind? He gave me a kite. <laughs> he looked at me so big as he'd have to die. And I said, What colour? <laughs> Just as I was going out, he pointed to a bottle on the shelf. He said, Do me a sample in there. I said, What from down here? <laughs> this is the part of the show which, because the show is devoted to music, it was, I suppose, inevitable. But I should bring to your attention once again the work of one of Britain's great, but alas, composers, forgotten composers. I refer, of course, to the Wakefield dwarf, Seth Bottlecrud. <laughs> the first man to discover that people who ate prunes were never late for work. <laughs> His father didn't like him. He used to play some rotten tricks on him, like tell him for years the gas meter was a piggy bank. <laughs> His father, unfortunately, had a very strange career. He was a weaver from Tint Whistle, until one day he fell in a loom and wafted his weft. <laughs> this didn't only cut him off from reality, it also made him into a passable soprano. <laughs> he turned to a life of crime with the Garstang Mafia and tried to rob a bank in Garstang. It was a failure, because as he went through the swinging doors, his braces got caught on the handle, the trousers came off, and his mask dropped off, and his gun got fast up his nose. <laughs> As he slid along the terrazzo floor, the bank manager said, is this a hold-up? He said, no, it's a cock-up. <laughs> when war was declared, although Seth only stood three foot six, he joined the Scots Guards. He lied about his height. <laughs> but in 1943, he was dropped behind enemy lines with a length of rubber tube and some radishes. The idea was to put the window up Hitler. <laughs> 
He was captured by the Gestapo, and when they realised that he belonged to a Scotch regiment, they tortured him by nailing his foot to a plank and playing a Jimmy Sham record. <laughs> he returned to this country in 1947, a broken man, and married a woman who had a good head for money. There was a slot in it. <laughs> she was a German farmer's daughter, at least we presume she was, because when she walked through a field of cows, she would shout, Ach dung, ach dung. <laughs> It wasn't a happy marriage, they didn't get on. In fact, at the wedding reception, they had separate cakes. <laughs> she hadn't got an ounce of passion in her. On their honeymoon, the only time she got a gleam in her eyes was they both got a shock of the electric blanket. <laughs> she was a big woman, she used to get her knickers on a prescription. <laughs> but it was at this time that Seth Bottlecrud wrote perhaps one of the most moving, moving pieces the world has ever known. He wrote it as he lay tragically dying after doing the 100 yards in 10 seconds flat. It fell down a lift shaft. <laughs> Here then, for the first time on British television, is the song that he wrote. As I say, it was written tragically as he lay dying. Thank you. <laughs> then he died. <laughs> This is the part of the show where I meet my guest for the evening. It's a young lady who's just returned from a split week at a Lincolnshire silo pit. <laughs> she sings quite a lot in the USA. Not the United States of America, I hasten to add, but upstairs in Thatic. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to join me now. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> she's in the back. Vitus Clinic. You're supposed to be over there with me. We're going to sing together. Uh, sing with you. Ooh. I thought I was singing with a new generation. No, no. Come over there before me big end goes. Ooh. Dance this way. I'd rather not if you don't mind. This way. Ooh. I'll come back. Oh, 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 oh. That's enough. I'm sorry. <sighs> nice to have you on the show. Thank you. Oh, come on, don't be shy. Come closer. After all, I'm just a man. Mm, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every minute with this kid is like 60 seconds. Tell me, why didn't you think we were going to sing together? It's obvious, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to hate myself for this, but no. Uh, age. I am, rapidly. No, no I mean, there's a gap. <laughs> Don't tell me these trousers have gone again. <laughs> no, a generation gap. The sort of songs that you sing and the sort of songs I sing, well, we're years apart, this. Why, you insolent doxy. <laughs> I've never been so insulted. Oh, you must have been. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sing with a broken arm? <laughs> Tell me. Now, in all seriousness, yeah. where have you been all my life? Well, for most of it, I wasn't even born. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you are going to sing for you with me because you don't know this, but I sing a lot of opera. Oh, yeah? I sing so much opera that sometimes I don't know if I'm on my head or my area. <laughs> I can keep up with you any day of the week. How about Wednesday? Early closing. Oh. <laughs> All right, now you're in. Right. You've sang with the clip. Meet the slaggy. This could be difficult. Could be difficult. Almost here. Rubbish. West Virginia. <laughs> Blue Ridge Mountains. Billy Road. Virginia, I've got one. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, <laughs> on the trail of the loads of pine. Follow that. Oh, this is a million songs. Keep moving, they want to hear it. Sugar. 50 feet a pound. It's 
herself a dark when she is alone. She's so affectionate and unfaithless. When she kisses me, I stay kissed. When my sugar walks down the street, all the birdies go tweet, tweet, tweet. Follow that. Too old. Well, it's you ain't never gonna hell, no. No, it's not. Crying all the time. <laughs> Dogs, 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 dogs. Why, well, me a bow wow. Daddy wouldn't buy me a bow wow. Now I've got a little cat, and I'm very fond of that. But you'd rather have the bow wow wow. Do your best. I'm a bit worried about you. Why? You've quite got a touch of distemper. <laughs> distemper. <laughs> What's that? Hard You let down men, you let down men, and you shake it all about. You do the locomotion and you turn around. That's what it's all about. Oh, this is awful. Sorry, kid. There it is. I'll check out the bills. Get it closer, be on the other side. Don't look at me, baby. Too. Oh, won't you dance? I won't dance. Oh. Don't ask me. Oh, I won't dance. Oh. Don't ask me. I wouldn't dance. Madam, would you? I've got no idea. Don't let the music win. I keep it Would you send Mr. Beethoven in, please? Thank you. Come in. Come in! Can I come in? <laughs> yes, come in. Why are you busy? <laughs> come and sit down. I'll sit down if you don't mind. <laughs> Now, what seems to be the trouble? Well, I had it this morning, but it's cleared up now. <laughs> what seems to be the trouble? Ten past nine. Oh, hell. I'm not well, that's the point. <laughs> it was last Wednesday. No, I tell a lie. Thursday. Thursday? I am rather no sugar. <laughs> I was in bed, and the alarm clock went off, and I never saw it go. <laughs> no, seriously, he went off and I didn't see it. So I turned to my wife, Gladys, I said. The alarm clock's gone off and I never heard it. And what did she say? I don't know, I never heard her. You heard me then. Pardon? You heard me then. Twelve minutes past. <laughs> well, she made me a cup of coffee, but I was so upset. I spilt it all over a nightdress. So it'd be right for wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, she turned to me. She said, are you going mutton? I said, delicious with matter fat peas and a bit of spinach. <laughs> well, just then, the neighbour started banging on the wall because of all the noise. But I couldn't hear him. What did you do then? Exactly, not a word. <laughs> I said, then I'll have to go 
don't see the quack. Quack, quack. <laughs> Have you got a duck in here? <laughs> what about a trumpet? <laughs> <laughs> On the rape bomb, Big Madeline. No, no. No, no, no. You see this chart on the wall? Oh, she's probably charging more now. Well, Inflation. <laughs> no, no, you see, I'm going to read this. See if you can hear me. What? Oh, God. Yes. Oh. No. S. Yes. P. <laughs> Have we got a bottle? <laughs> this is a farce. No, it's me ears. <laughs> She asked me what I thought of her ditties. <laughs> well, I told her. The next thing is I remember coming through the transom window and it's in a garbage pail. I think I'd better test your reflex. Yes, I've not been for three days. <laughs> <laughs> That's established one thing. My knees aren't deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. I've got these bloody things on it. <laughs> Look, I'll give you some pills. I want you to take these three times a day. You need a rest. Go to Baden. Pardon? Baden, Baden. Pan, pardon. Oh, get stuffed. Three times a day. Thank you. <laughs> Culture Hunters. <laughs> Tonight I would like to sing for you some enchanted evening from the musical extravaganza Scythe Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> I've got your coat. Yeah, well, I know we're all sharing the same dressing room, but I mean, you've taken my coat. Well, have you got a cardigan? No. <laughs> well, this is very unprofessional, if you don't mind my saying you so. You should have got your own. Well, it's ludicrous. <laughs> Get back to old and red. In wild violence. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> when then, Sue. <laughs> 
and there, as you know, as the rail will be, the sound of her laughter. <laughs> <laughs> got a spare. Well, what's the matter with you? Just give me the shirt, that's all. That isn't the point we're trying to do, we're showing this. Just give me the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
the part of the show where we get away from the sophisticated veneer of television and get back to the grassroots. Yeah. 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 To the days when people got round the piano yeah. Yeah. and sang the old songs. And that's what we're going to do tonight. And not only you, the studio audience and all you people at home. Whatever you're doing, drop it. <laughs> <laughs> and let's sing together the old songs. Now, all join in, don't forget. Are we ready? Yeah. 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 We'll start off with Side by Side. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. 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 Yes. Go ahead. myself today. <laughs> I stood under the Gladys Mills, but she got too heavy. <laughs> as one goes through life, <laughs> who can forget? Show me the way. <laughs> <laughs> to go home. <laughs> Here, for God's sake. I've never had a rough, rough time since that sailor at Flamborough Head. Oh, I am sorry, Dorothy. It's just that whenever we play gypsy music, I always get intoxicated. This we've noticed. I haven't touched a drop. <laughs> oh, see, madam, the painted jade. <laughs> the itinerant gammon. She doesn't need powder. She's got polyfill. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Never been the same since you joined us. No, true, true. We shall never be able to replace Madge, you see. <laughs> I'd love to mention Madge, Vera. That woman was a saint, a positive cherubim. <laughs> Fingers like an angel. <sighs> the thing she could do with an upright. Oh, grand. <laughs> Not the cherubim I had only either of them for very long. <laughs> yeah, I can never forget that afternoon. It's etched. Oh, now, come on, come along. You know, pull yourself together, Dorothy. How can I ever forget it? We just brought the student prince to a climax. And we were poised. Poised. Ready to launch ourselves on the vagabond king. And she was slipped on a fandango. We were down the cow. <laughs> Common knowledge she'd been seeing the manager. Yes, one had heard. Well, I'm not one surprise, well, you know. Oh, well, I know, I know. Trust in God, you co op, David, that's always been my motif in life. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was outside her room last night. No! Yes. Shouted that. Shouted he could love her through the keyhole. <laughs> I thought that's a nice trick if you can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that Scotsman last week? Oh, yes, the one with the hip flask. Well, I hope it was that. Legs <laughs> <laughs> like a Doric pillar. Oh. <laughs> he came out on the stage, you know, and asked us to get off. Yeah. I said, we don't do requests. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know me, I'm a little bit of fun. Oh, yeah. It was so weather-beaten, this high burden, mm. you know, he looked, mm. swing a bit, you know. Ooh. I couldn't resist. I, never, I don't know what came over me. I said, what's warm under the kilt? 
He said nothing. It's all in first class working order. <laughs> <laughs> You've just got to adapt. Yes, I know. We've been with the wind. <laughs> Mum, oh, she's yeah. tapping again. Come on, it's... Uh, Here we go again, then. Rosemary. <laughs> Can't be. I've just played that. <laughs> <laughs> now, re remember, Dorothy, there's an arpeggio at the end of the first passage. No, it's all right. I went before we came on. <laughs> <laughs> Good news indeed, Lady Mary. We've drugged the king, placed him in a carriage, taken him through the snow, snow, thick, thick snow. And he's now incarcerated in my dungeon. He'll not appear for his coronation. I shall become king. And you, my dear Lady Mary, will be my queen. <laughs> My people. It's the king. It can't be, I tell you. You're his betrothed. Take him to the garden, find out who or what he is, and then stab him. Stab him? Exactly. <laughs> Lady Mary, please be wary. Go and find out the cause. I catch a wife there, keeps a knife there up the leg of a drawer. Your Majesty. You what, love? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I, I'm the king. That must be Lady Mary, the Queen's betrothed. I am, of course, I, of course, am Rudolf Rasendel, an English tourist who, because of my uncanny resemblance to the kidnapped king, I'm here to impersonate him, uh, him, the king, that is, <laughs> in order to foil a dastardly plot engineered by Black Michael, the king's rascally brother. What did he say? Never mind. I shall eavesdrop on them during the next waltz. <laughs> One thing. You watch this. You're the only fella dancing with it. <laughs> Do you mean to say that you don't even recognize your own brother? <laughs> Call me brother, George. Edwin, Michael, Matthew, Peter, <laughs> Simon, <laughs> big family. Oh. Oh, I, I don't think he suspected, thanks to my quick thinking. <laughs> oh, my dear, you're so beautiful. Come into my arms. For oh, those eyes, those nose. Oh, you've never spoken to me like that before. <laughs> you've got such strength, such power. Air, open your mouth, and start to your feet. What means this, Michael? <coughs> the real king has a birthmark on his armpit. It says, born Ruritania, 1886. You have none such. You are a fraud, an imposter, and you shall die. On God, oh, hey. you will die. For Ruritania is the cry for freedom calling. Your ratings now are falling. And so I challenge you to draw your sword. I'll ask the band to play a chord. Out. It's time for a fade out. It's time now for me just to say to shame. Oh, 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 ah, oh, oh. Not too much. Come for that. 
Well, let's see who got the verdict that time, shall we? Could we have the points for Black Michael, please? Thank you, that's 19. And for Rudolph Rassendil is 25. So the winner is Rudolph Rassendil. Ah! That time, I know. All is well. Black Michael is dead. Oh, goody. I love only you. Oh. And I have released the real king and... Oh, yes. oh. It's like looking into a mirror. <laughs> Come to England, marry me, be my braid. <laughs> the result then. Ruritania with one freed king and two joined lovers go on to meet Terrible. Transylvania in the home oh. counties. And of course the vampire's decision is final. So it's good night from all of us here at the Mecca Ballroom. Mecca. Next week the Peggy Mould formation team will be dancing on the waterfront with special guest Lionel Blair. Are we ready team? Yeah. It's time to leave you now with the square dance. <laughs> think how music can affect your life. When the wife and I get married, the organist was playing Oh Perfect Love till he saw the wife's family canter down the aisle. Then he stopped and broke into the theme from High Noon. <laughs> it was a very emotional ceremony. The wife's mother was crying all the way through it. Her hand was fast in the collection box. <laughs> and when it was all done, I said to the vicar, how much do I owe you? He said, in this parish, you always pay according to the beauty of your chosen bride. So I gave him a tenner. <laughs> He came running after me and said, wait a minute, son, you want five pence change? <laughs> I'm not saying the wife's ugly, but she went for a swim in Loch Ness and the monster got up and picked it in the lake. <laughs> but enough of my problems. I've enjoyed doing this show. It's been marvellous working with the musicians we've had. Each and every one is an individual. It's only when they play together it's such a bloody row. <laughs> and, of course, we've had the second generation, which is a sort of teething rush with tap shoes. But the thing that's really impressed me is having such a guest star that we've had tonight because it's quite a year for her. Not only has she got two records, first and second in the American hit parade, but she's also been voted the world's leading female country and western singer. I've enjoyed working with her mainly because she's a hell of a nice kid. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Olivia Newton-John. Yeah. 
And welcome to the Adelaide Hall. Tonight we are to hear the first performance of a new work, Leslie Dawson's The Gorilla Joke in One Movement. This is to be sung by the Chestnut Chorale, conducted by the composer. And here is Mr. Dawson now approaching the podium to conduct this, the very first performance of The Gorilla Joke.
But the gorilla stayed. Yes, the gorilla stayed. And the barman was afraid. Yes, the barman was afraid. Because the gorilla stayed. Because the gorilla stayed. You won't have any more. You won't have any more. No, 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 you won't have any more. No, 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 no more. Absolutely first class, my dear, first class. Oh, thank you. And now, Doctor, how about a song from you? <laughs> I hardly think that I would shine in such a glittering incandescent constellation. Oh. Spare my blushes, oh, please. Oh, now, come along now. Surely, at a musical gathering such as this, all the participants should entertain. <laughs> oh, do, Doctor, please. Yes. Uh, no, no, madam, really, I I'm embarrassed. Oh, for me? Well, I'm hardly one of nature's songbirds. But if you insist. Yes. Ah, yes. Yes. Uh, no music, Vicar. I must be forced to ask you to remain tacit, I believe is the expression. Thank you. <clears throat> you can have a bit of this, you can have a bit of that. You can have a bit of each of the other. You can have a bit of the back, you can have a bit of the back. My sister on a brother. <laughs> Please forgive me. I don't know what came over me. I must apologize, sir. I do apologize most humbly. You and the congregation. I don't know what came over me. I think I'd better leave. I think you better had, Doctor. Yes, I think under the circumstances. That would be the best thing all round. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Dr. Dreckel. Good night. <laughs>
show tonight. And God bless you. Thank you.